Do you want to see yourself on one of these? Yeah, so I know that I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Go. You're the man, man. Thank you. Thou hast it now. King, Potter, Glamis, all, as the weird women promised. And I fear thou place most foul report. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. If there come truth from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why, by the verities on thee made good, it will not be my oracles as well and set me up in hope, but hush, no more. Here's our chief guest. If he hadn't forgotten, it had been as a gap in our great thieves, and altogether unbecoming. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and I'll request your presence. Let your highness command upon me, to the which my duties are with a most indissoluble tie forever knit. Ride you this afternoon. I am my good lord. We should have else desired your good advice, which still hath been both grave and prosperous in this day's council, but we'll take tomorrow. Is it far you ride? As far, my lord, as will fill up the time twixt this and supper. Go not my horse the better. I must become a borrower of the night for a dark <laughs> hour of the plain. Fail not our feast. My lord, I will not. We hear our bloody cousins are bestowed in England and in Ireland, not confessing their cruel parricide. But of that tomorrow, when therewithal we shall have cause of state craving us jointly. Hie you to horse, adieu till you return at night. Go fleance with you. I, my good lord, our time does call upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure afoot, and so I do commend you to their backs. Farewell. Farewell. Let every man be master of his time till seven at night. Till then, to make society the sweeter welcome, we shall keep ourselves till supper time alone. Well then, God be with you. Sir, a, a word with you. Attend those men our pleasure. They are, my lord, without the power of speech. Bring them before us. To be thus is nothing, but to be safely thus. Our fears and banquets stick deep, and in his royalty of nature reigns that which would be feared. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. Then, prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown, and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with an unlineal hand, no son of mine succeeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind, to make them kings, the seed of Banquo Kings. <laughs> Who's there? Ah. Now go to the door and wait there till we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please, Your Highness. Why then now have you considered of my speeches? Know you that it was he in those times past which held you so under fortune, thus did Banquo. You met at none to us. I did so, and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my age. I, in the catalogue, ego for man. Now, if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it, and I will put that business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off and grapples you to the heart and love of us. 
I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do to spite the world. And I know that so weary of disasters, told with fortune, that I would set my life on any chance, commend it or be rid of it. Both of you know Banquo is your enemy. True, my lord. So is he mine, and in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrust against my nearest of life. And though I could, with barefaced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not. For certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I dare not drop, but will his fall do I myself struck down? And thence it is that I to your assistance do make love. We shall, my lord, perform what you command us. Go on, lie. Your spirits shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourselves, and something from the palace always thought that I require a clearness, and with him, to leave no rubs nor botches in the work, Leon's his son, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must meet the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. Resolve, my lord. I'll call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it finds heaven, must find it out tonight. No, no, let's go. Three, two. Is Banquo gone from court? Ah, madame, thou returns again tonight. Say to the king I would attend this leisure for a few words. Madame, I will. Not had all spent, for anxiety is thought without consent. To say to me that which we destroy, in destruction dwell in doubtful joy. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone? Of sorry as fancies, your companions making, using those such, which should have died with them they think on. Things without all remedy, should be without regard. What's done is done. We have scorched the snake, not killed it. She'll close and be herself, whilst our poor malice remains in danger of her former tooth. So let the frame of things destroy it. Both the world suffer ere we eat our meal in fear and sleep in affliction of these terrible dreams which shake us nightly. Better be with the dead, whom we, to gain our peace, have sent to peace than on the tortures of the mind to lie in restless ecstasy. Duncan is in his grave. Tread after light fitful fevers, he sleeps well. Treachery has done its worst. Nor steel, nor poison, malice domestic, foreign levy, nothing can harm him further. Come on, gentle my lord, sleep over your rough looks, be bright and jovial with your guests tonight. And so shall I, my love. And so I pray for you. Allow, apply your eminence to Banquo. Present him eminence in both eye and tongue. Unsafe the while that we must leave our honors in these flattering streams and make our faces visits to our hearts, disguising what they are. You must leave this. Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his Fleance lives, but in them's nature's copy's not a turn. There's comfort, yet they are assailable. Then be thou joked, ere the bat hath flown his cloistered flight, ere to black Hecate summons the sharp horns beetle with his drowsy hum hath rung night's yawning peal, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What's to be done? Be innocent of the knowledge, dearest Chuck, so thou applaud the deeds. Come, sealing night, scarf up the tender eye of pitiful day, and with thy bloodied and invisible hands, 
cancel and tear to pieces this great bond which holds me pale. Light thickens, and the crow makes wing to the rupee wood. The good things of day do droop and drowse, whilst the night's black agents to their prey do rouse. Thou marvelous at my words, hold thee still. Things bad begun do make strong themselves by ill. So pray thee, who with me? But who did bid thee join with us? I am a bad man. He needs not our mistrust, since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to the direction just. Oh. Then stand with us. The waste yet glimmers with some fruits of day. Mm. Now spires that they could travel at a pace to gain the time in the end. And near approach is the subject of our walk. Hark, I your horses. Give us the light there. Ho! Oh. Then tis he. The rest that are within the note of expectation already are in the court. Mm, his horses go about. I am for about a mile. He usually does, as most men do. From hence to the palace gate, make the walk. A light. A light! To see! Stand to it. It will be rain tonight. Let it cool down! Ah! Ah! Oh, treachery! Oh. Ah! Fly, Leon! Ah! Fly, fly, fly! Ah! Thou mayest your bed! O oh, slave! Who did strike out the light? Was not the way. But there's one down! The sun is fled! We have lost us half of our affair. Uh, well, let's away and say how much is done. <laughs> See me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry. Two Macbeths up front holding hands with Lady Macbeth and Banquo. Oh, you want to hold your hands? That's great. Yeah. No, hang on, you should go up and hold your father's hand. My son. <laughs> now go ahead, take your value. It's well deserved. sunlight. You see that? So hey, realize nothing over here is on the camera. So um, when we come in, uh, excitedly to read you go with one. The only thing I noticed is that the murderer should have walked into the camera. Yeah, that's the only thing I noticed. At the end, the camera <laughs> might come on. <laughs> but otherwise, fine. Enough. I would have liked to see Banco's body lying on the ground. Are you going to see my body? Hey, Ray, can you see me? Wait a minute. Hey, John. Hey, John. Hi, Clayton. Hey, John. Hey, John. Hey, John. I'm right here. Okay, what up? We're, we have our, our camera. Are you going to see them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Three, two, one. Oh, I'm here and I need oh. someone to replace my. Oh, no, no, you ready? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, you're on there. So you are you don't have to do it then. All right, excited entrance first. Come in, everybody, come in. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs>
degrees. Sit down. At first and last, the hearty welcome. Thank you, yes, Your Majesty. Majesty. Ourselves will mingle with society and play the humble host. My hostess, who is in her status, but in the best time, will require her welcome. Pronounce it for me, to all our friends, for my heart speaks their welcome. Speak uh, <laughs> in concrete with their heart sense, so sides are even. I'll stay in the midst, be large in mass, I know I'll we'll drink measure. The table round! <laughs> There's a blood upon my face. This bangles then. This better bangles than with within my state of desires. Is it dispatched? Yes, my lord, he filled his cup, but I did for him. Though at the best of us, brothers. Yet if you did a good life of Leon's, thou did it, thou art non parallel. Monster Rosa. Leon's is good. I'm not going to be Had else been perfect, who has a marvel founded at a rock? as broad and general as the kissing air. Now, I'm carried, craved, confined, bound into souls and doubts and fears. I thank you, safe. I, my good lord, safe in addition to eyes, with twenty trenched ashes on his head. Thank you, I tell you. There the growing serpent lies. The one that's bad has a greater than in time, the venom breeds, and no teeth for the present. Get it gone. Tomorrow we'll hear ourselves again. My royal lord, you do not give the chair. The fist is sold that is not often roused while it is a making. Tis given with welcome. The feet were best at home. From thence, the sports to make a ceremony. Meet you were bare without it. <laughs> Sweet remembrance. <coughs> now, good digestion wait on appetite and health on both. Please, Your Highness. You have we now our country's honor rule. What a great person of our venerable present. Who may I rather challenge for unkindness than pity for mischance? His absence, sir, may play upon his thoughts. May please, Your Highness, to grace us with your royal company. The table's full. Here's the place reserved, sir. Where? Here, my lord. What is this move, your highness? Which of you have done this? What, my lord? Look as not that I did. Never shake. The glory lost at me. Gentlemen, rise. His highness not well. Sit. What difference? My, my lord is not with us. And how beautiful is his youth. For you, you sit. The thing is momentary. Quite thought you again be well. Um, if you much know him, you shall abandon and extend his passion. Are you a man? Ah, oh, and a bold one that dare look on that which met a pollen devil. Oh, proper stuff. This is the very panting of your fear. This is the air down dagger which you set. Let you to Duncan. Oh, this floss that starts, imposter to two fear. <clears throat> With well become a woman's story and when his fire, authorized by her grandson. Shame yourself. Why do you make such faces? When I'm done, you look but on a stool. Heavy, see there, behold, look, no. How say you? Why, what care I, if thou canst not speak to? If from channel houses and our grace must send, those that we bear back, our monuments shall be the moles of kites. What? 
front of Manny Foley. If I stand there, I saw him. Fight for shame. Blood has been shed here now in the olden times. Here, human statue purge the gentle wheel. I and since two murders have been performed, too terrible for the year. The times have been that when brains were out, the men would die and there and then. But now they rise again with 20 mortal murders on their crowns and push us from our stools. This is more strange than such a murderess. I won't say that. You know, Dr. is still like you. Oh, I forget. Do not mute at me, my most worthy friend. I have a strange infirmity, which is nothing to those that need me. Come, bow and hail to all. Then I will sit down. Give me some wine, feel full. I drink to a general joy all the four people. And for dear friend, Danko, whom we miss. Would he work here? To all and him we thirst, and all to all. Won't and quit my sight. Let the others hide thee. The, the bones are marrowless. The blood is the blood is cold. Thou has no speculations in those sides with so those glories. Think of this, good peers. But as a thing of custom, uh, don't uh, but don't let it uh, only spoil you the pleasure of the time. When men dare, I dare. Approach thou, let the blood be rushing bare, the heart and tiger, all the armed rhinoceros. You can take any shape of that. My firm nerve shall never tremble again of your life. And, and dare me to the desert of thy sword. If trembling. If I, gentlemen, if I, if the trembling inhabit me again, please protest me, a baby of, of a girl, a horrible, horrible shadow, and real mockery. Why, why so, being gone? Gentlemen, I'm a man again. Pray me and sit still. You have this place in the words. Broke look good meeting with the most the mild disorder. You may miss you may miss speech. Can such things be and overcome us like the summer clouds without any wonder? You may be very, you may be very strange. But now, and even to the disposition that I own, but now you can behold such sights and keep your ruby of your cheeks. But mine is blanched with fear. What size, my lord? I pray you speak now. The girl's words. Answer in rages and advance. Good night. Then now upon the order of your going, but go at once. Good night and get the shot. Attend his majesty. A kind good night as well.
it will have cloud. Okay? Cloud will have cloud. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Augurs and understood religions have but my goat pies and chops and jokes for the fox. The secret man of love, what is the night? Almost at all with morning, which is which. How says though the night dove denies its person at our greatest fighting? I hear it, by the way, but I will send. There is not a one of them but in his house. I keep her seven feet. I will tomorrow. And behind I will to will sisters. More shall they speak for now and then to know. But the worst means the worst. For my own good, all causes shall give way. I'm in flout. Stepped in so far that should I win no more. Returning to us tedious, as go over. Strange things are happening. That we are to hand, which must be acted, ere they may be again. <laughs> Come, we are to sleep. My strange and self abuse is the initiate fear that once hard yours. You are yet a young indeed. Two night was to see, but we see no truth in your report. How was your last book? Majesty, I have seen her hands on her back. So her nightgown upon her, unlock her closet, uh, take forth paper, fold it, write upon it, read it, afterwards seal it, and again, back. All this while you put asleep. A great pedagogy's nation, in nature, to receive the rights of anger of sleep and to effect the watch. In this longer agitation, beside walking and other actual performance, what at any time does she speak the word? That, sir, which I will not report after her. You made you be. That's the most new you. Neither you nor anyone, having no witness to confirm my speech. Hello, you. In the house. This is her very guise. And upon my life, fast asleep. Observe her. Stand close. How she come by that light? Why? Stood by her. She has light by her continually. It's her command. You see her eyes are open. Aye, but their sense is shut. What is it she does now? L look how she rock her hands. It is an custom action with her to seem thus rushing, washing her hands. I have known her continuing doing this a quarter of an hour. Yet there is a spot. Hot. She speaks. I'll try to send them down to what she comes from her. She satisfied my remember strongly. I'll stand spot out, I say. One, two. What? Then it's time to do it. Hell is murky. Fly, my lord, fly. A soldier in the field. What need we fear? Who knows it? But none can call all power to account. Yes, who would have found the old man to have had so much? 
Even so? Too bad, too bad. There's no king on the gate. Come, come, come. Give me your hand. What's down? Cannot be. Oh, come. Too bad. Too bad. Too bad. Well, she now go to the bat. Directly. Oh, we're sitting <coughs> down. Unnatural days do bring unnatural troubles. In fact, it amounts to the damp pillows. God save us. Take care of her and remove her from all the noise. My mind, she has made it and amazed my sight. I think, but I dare not speak. Good night, good God, Hunter. Hear our fears on the outward walls. The cry is still, they come. Our castle's strength will love a siege to score. Here let them lie till famine and the ague eat them up. Were they not forced with those that should be ours, we might have met them fearfully, fear to fear, and beat them backward home. What is that noise? I have almost forgotten. The taste of fear. The time has been. My senses would have cooled over a night shriek, and my fell of hair would at a dismal tree rouse and stir as life for it. I accept fool the horrors, direness, familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once stop me. Wherefore was that cry? Queen. It's she should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow. Tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to die. 
dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow. The poor player that struts and frets his hours upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, fool, sound, fear, signifying nothing. Should not spend the large expense of time for the record what several loves and uh, make wish with you, make us wish and even make us wish you. My things and kinsmen, hence was the oath. The first that ever Scotland in such a honor name, what's more to do? As uh, which would be planted newly with the time, as welcome our friend abroad, that blend of uh, tyranny of this, uh, that blend of watchful tyranny, producing for the cruel ministers of this that bird and his bang like queen. Oh, as this point, by self and violent hands took of her life. This and the what need for else that calls upon us that by the grace of grace that we will perform in measure, time and place. So Thanks to all at once, and each one of you invite, invited by us to see us crowned at the school. Uh, talk with each other for you know 10 or 15 minutes so let's get up around the camera I have some questions I'd like to ask you and her at the same time so Clayton, are you ready are you guys ready to have a little talk with us you can hear <laughs> Come on, you guys. Come on in. Okay. <laughs> We all in the friend. So one question I have, and it was suggested to me by Clayton for both classes, is that what difference did it make to the people who were performing uh, to have lines memorized? in your head and acting them out as compared to reading them off a script. When you were practicing, did it make a difference? What did you learn, if anything? <laughs> uh, well, I think 
for me, I really had to understand what was being said in each of the lines and like how the words worked together to be able to like actually memorize it and know how I'm going to say it instead of just like looking at a sheet of paper. So, so yeah, so just be able to visualize exactly what I'm saying and what I'm trying to get across rather than just reading it off. Is that the same on your end? Yes, somebody, uh, somebody talked about what it was like to the experience of performing without the script. Yeah, you you have to think what is coming next, how how the character is thinking, and it's kind of bringing you into the character. You think in his way, and kind of get a clearer understanding of. And you uh, have to throw yourself into the characters because uh, besides verbal language, you may also use some body language to express your characters better. And uh, since uh, actually my lines are not ma uh, it's not matched, but I have to use some body language to express my emotion during. The Can I get the lady Macbeth to say a little bit about that experience? Um, I kind of um, put a lot of things in my back. Um, I kind of imagine myself um, being not myself, but being Lady Macbeth, and to imagine what she was thinking and what she was doing at that moment. So I think it's better that we can go to the two. Kathy, what would you say? And uh, I think Lady Macbeth has already gone back. At that time, I uh, had to like uh, imagine uh, how she went to those flashback, uh, flashbacks, and uh, uh, yeah, that's what really uh, that that well. Um, that was really cool. I think it's also important to ask your partners so that they can make it. Good point. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? No. <laughs> I didn't hear what Xi Young said. Hi, Xi Young. I thought you did great. Hey, yeah, say that again. That's a really great point. Uh, I think it is very important to trust your partners so we can make it together, make a good performance. Right. Uh, <laughs> whose idea was it to have uh, uh, the camera be Banquo? Huh? Okay. During the banquet scene, you, you didn't have uh, you didn't have the ghost. We were the ghosts, right? Looking at us like we were the ghosts. I thought that was terrific. <laughs> Eric, what were you gonna say? Uh, uh, when, I, when I just finished recite my lines, and I suddenly found that maybe I'm familiar with work with my partners, like when I'm in the role of doctor. When I work with the gentle woman, and I suddenly find out there are a lot of lines that just cannot come into my mind. So I think it's really important to remember what you said and remember how to interact with your partners. That's really important during when you are performing any kind of play. Well, also, I noticed uh, when you don't have the script in your hand, you are free to respond and just watch Lady Macbeth. And we could see your, uh, the reaction of gentle woman and doctor. And that's as moving as watching Lady Macbeth, because we, we, we see kind of the horror of it reflected in your faces because you're not reading the script. I thought that was very, very powerful. And I think it's important to remember your partner's lies. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to try and arrange it so that Fleance was running to Hangzhou and, and that Banquo was trying to get there. Uh, we couldn't quite get it as, as much of a dramatic effect as we wanted, but that was what our intention was by having playing into the camera that way. Yeah, that was great. We felt it. We felt it. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you can. I'm sure chills ran down your spine. <laughs> So did you uh, what, did you learn anything about the characters that you were portraying by learning the lines? Yes, what? Yeah. Go ahead. You had a chance to see these people. You may as well tell them what you did. 
Well, I I've, oh. I found that Macbeth um, definitely. I don't think Macbeth cares that he is evil, but what he does care about is how people see him. So he wants to appear outwardly to be noble and justified. And even when he's talking with people he's hiring to kill his best friend, he has to try and explain it and shift the blame from him onto Banquo. It's not my fault that Banquo has to die, it's Banquo's fault. I don't know that Macbeth himself really believes that, but he just wants other people to believe that he's in the right. Even murderers. Right, even murderers, <laughs> even even uh, people who already have no moral qualms, Macbeth has to be right. He has to be justified. So it's it's more of a pride thing than anything else. He doesn't care morally whether what he does is right or wrong. He cares what his image is. And he cares so much about it, his image. He's kind of like a, a, a little child who, when they play a game, it's not enough that they win, they don't, they, they want everyone else to lose. <laughs> it's not enough that Macbeth is king, no one else can be king after him. Even though he has no children, he and Lady Macbeth have no children, and there's no one who's, uh, who he has to protect the throne for, for the future, he still wants to kill Banquo and Fleance because he can't stand the idea of anyone else being king. So. You find out a lot about your character by having to know their lines and internalize what they're thinking and what they're feeling. I love that. I found that like, oops, sorry, I don't know if you want to go. I don't know, I found that like even being a minor character, like the servant and fleance is what I was. So like, I found that Shakespeare's writing is like extremely important and like his lines for the major characters are like very poetic and beautiful but also that even the minor characters have like a beautiful role as well in like body language and acting a certain way, which I thought was really cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask um, Jonathan about playing a servant who comes to break the news because you spoke something about the way those lines were, were written. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like- just, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, the server is actually helping for uh, Macbeth to know what is he doing to break his fancy and to bring out the cruel truths to him. So I feel like when he, maybe maybe the server is clear about what is really happening, and but but you know Macbeth is he's a lord, so when he needs to bring that out probably he needs to go through this kind of struggle himself as well. So to him, like with his own position, he has to a lot of things to think about as well. So I think that's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And Macbeth is trying to pretend to be brave after that. You see, he's yelling around. He's the king, he's acted in a very king way and but he's just pretending, he's still afraid. When the cry comes, he becomes a bit um, distracted. And when the bad news comes, he just becomes devastated. He, he just stops trying to pretend to be brave because he kind of think, what is the meaning of this? And it's just full, and he's kind of died inside. He lose what he wants, and he just the life in him is dead. When he said "out, out, brief candle," what is he saying to? Who is he addressing? Maybe just himself. Maybe he's just saying, "Okay, I am the fool. I am the player," and not, and so is a lot of people. They're just poor players, and they, they just come and struggle on the stage, and then just disappears, just dies, just fade. Oh, it's kind of desperate. 
Did it dawn on you when you were learning those lines that you are just an actor strutting and fretting at the same time that you're talking about life being like actors strutting and fretting? <laughs> if, if people have no life in him and have no hope in him, he would think in this way. But I think if I am in that position and I will become such a way as well. All right, and uh, the murderers were a big hit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, they did. They did a very good job. And I was kind of wondering. I was going to ask our murderers um, what they thought of Macbeth. I mean, what they thought, given their lines, how they thought this guy, what this guy was like. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> <laughs> right. How is that? Macbeth? Well, the murderers, they're really just these disillusioned guys who have nothing to lose. And um, Macbeth, the, uh, Macbeth paints, they're, they're really after that top 1% of the population, the, the upper class, and which is Macbeth, but he takes the blame and puts it on Banquo and just kind of shifts that over to him for a minute. He's the one who's given you all of these problems. So do you care about any of that, or is this like just, yeah, 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 yeah? Like, Oh, the, the way we portray it, because when we go in for the first time, we, we, we are really disillusioned. We're like, oh, we don't care. We'll do anything for you, man. Like, he's, he's really, like, getting them excited and angry. And um, he uses So you feel, what, like, real allegiance to him? To yeah. Like, and he, we he, love you, dude. We'll do anything for you. <laughs> yeah. He also angers that he uses the same uh, tactic that his wife used on him earlier. She was like, are you a man? And right. then he does it to the murderers. He's like, are uh, you guys men? And they're like, yeah, we're men. He's like, are you going to just let this one slide? So I thought that was interesting that he pulled that one out on them. But yeah, <laughs> and <then> he just, <laughs> he's taking yeah. notes, internal notes on how to manipulate. God took one out of his wife's plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> So I, I want to ask anyone who was somebody who had never performed Shakespeare before, can you tell me, was, was it fun to do and would you want to do it again? For some of you, I am curious, would you want to do it again? Yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, I think uh, the whole... Uh, Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so I think the whole preparation of this uh, play is very interesting to me and uh, it's, this is my first time to uh, play a role in the drama and uh, I think during uh, during the play uh, it's not only about only focusing on my own lines and my own role and I have more time to uh, uh, observe others observe other actors and I think yeah, the whole part is very interesting and fascinating. Yeah. What about Amber, you, uh, Minnie? Some of you guys, what do you think? Yeah. I think from my line, I think Macbeth um, doesn't care his image because uh, I think he blames all his faults and murders uh, to the destiny. He, uh, he believes what the witches said. In my lines, there is a line said that God can not say that I did it. Yeah. Uh, he thinks that uh, it's destiny taught him to murder someone, murder other people. It's not his fault. It's the God. It's a God uh, indication. Yeah. So, um, but he can't escape the guilty feeling. And so it's kind of contradiction. And then finally, he got some crazy. Oh, a little yeah. bit crazy. How did it feel for you to try to be that on stage? How did, you, <laughs> how did you reach that? Uh, it's, um, or how did you practice? Practice. Just uh, imagine you have a lot of power, but you don't know how to use it. Like, um, you're a powerful man, but you are not a good man, actually. 
uh, that kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. He's trying to fight this destiny. He's trying to fight this fate. When he assigned the, the murderers, he's trying to kill Banco and his and Banco's mm -hmm. son so that the prophecy cannot become true. But then he fails. Dion's escaped. And when he receives the message, he becomes, he loses a bit of hope because, oh, I can't, is it that, is it true that I can't fight this? And he still tries to fight it. When he, uh, when he's trying to find another prophet, he, uh, and he, and when the wood comes, when the when when he was told that the Fernan woods is washing towards them, he's still kind of grasping a bit of hope that he, oh, okay, uh, Macduff, they think, why should I be kidding? Why should I be aware of it? And Maybe that's why he died, because, okay, this is all Uber's, um, Uber's uh, long ago. It's just a play. I'm just playing this role, and then I'm, I'm gone. I'm out. My candle is out. And you signify nothing. Yeah. Yeah. He just lost his hope. And maybe that's why he loses that status of his head cut off. <laughs> and we didn't have a we didn't have a bloody head. Of, of <laughs> <laughs> We're running past our time here, and I've got to get my students home. So thank you very much. We had a lot of fun. You guys did beautifully, I thought. Hey, you you know, What to you uh, later this week, right? Yeah, Have a good flight home. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You did great.